It's my first year as rector, seven on staff before that as a formation advisor, spiritual director. First line of my job description is be the leader and spiritual father of the seminary. And there's no place I'd rather be considered a privilege and honor uh, to be that rector and, and to continue to maintain, create, and grow that vibrant and healthy environment we have at SJV. You know, 18 to 24 is such a, uh, such a special time uh, for, for, in this case, young men. Um, it's a time when the Lord seizes a man's heart and become his disciple. It's also a time when the, the mind is growing together, actually physically. You know, the, the frontal lobes are connected, hopefully by the time the men are leaving. And, and so that's just a really powerful is when the mind and the heart are both given over to the Lord. God has a plan for their life. Uh, so it's, our, it's, a, it's a place where the men set a trajectory for their life. And, and uh, it's such a privilege. All of us priests on staff and all of our staff, as I mentioned in the homily, feel called to this. And, and don't take it lightly and, and know the, the stakes are high, but, but the Lord is leading. So it's our May crowning mass, and I didn't preach on Mary, um, but I was asked to say a few words about my vocation, and I consider my vocation uh, very Marian, and so um, that's profoundly Marian, so I'd like to honor Mary in that way for, for really breathing spiritual life into me, uh, spiritual life into me as a, as a young man. Uh, so when I was 30 years old, I was living in New York City, I was working for a private equity firm, and and I uh, had many of the things that would, people would consider important, but, but I had a growing restlessness in my heart. And as St. Augustine would say in his confessions, right in the first paragraph, he said, our heart is restless until it rests in God. And that's the restlessness that I was experiencing. It's just look good on the outside, but there's a way inside that I, I knew there was more, that our heart is bigger. Our heart's made for more than what the world can offer us. So I was really searching, and I was speaking with my brother on the phone. I don't know if you remember this, Joe, but I, he said, have you ever asked God? I, there were some, I was at a crossroads making some major decisions in my life, uh, career-wise and relationship-wise, and <clears throat> really searching. And I said, well, that's a great idea, you know? I'll pray about it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, a good idea. And, and he said, no, I'm actually hanging up the phone right now, and you're going to pray right now. I said, oh, okay. So I did that. I hung up the phone and swung my feet around the bed and, and asked the Lord, what, what would you like for my life? And that was really a turning point. I can see that now when I look back. That was the turning point in my life where uh, we can say, what do we want to do with our life? But when that actually comes true, that's not enough. So that was the turning point. I look back now with great clarity and I and my brother didn't stop there. He invited me on a retreat with him. And the retreat was in Medjugorje with a, with a Croatian priest. And so this is kind of the Marian part of my vocation. I was led by this priest who had um, deep spiritual gifts. And so we walked into this retreat uh, conference room. And there was a hubbub in our pilgrimage group that he could read your soul. <laughs> I remember thinking, I should have gone to confession if he can read my soul. <laughs> and, you know, so it's such human thinking, right? Because God, God reads our soul at every moment, and, but I'm worried about what this man would think. Anyway, I walked into the room, and he says, praise be Jesus and Mary. And there was a peace that filled my heart that I hadn't experienced since I was a young boy. And that's the peace I didn't know at the time, but... Jesus talks about that peace. In John 16, he says, My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give. So let your hearts not be troubled or afraid. And so I knew that, couldn't articulate that at the time, but I was like, this has to be the center of my life. Whatever this is, this is real. And so I remember coming back home from that retreat, and, um, and people were on blackberries and in Penn Station in New York, and I just said, this is, this is not, if, if this is true, this is, I can't live here. I can't go there anymore. I can't live there anymore. And so I told my, um, the men that I work for uh, that I had, was going to go back to Minnesota, and they were all pretty impacted by that, or they all puzzled by it, and they said, boy, that retreat really had an impact on you, and I said, yeah. It, it did. 
And then, and then <laughs> we thought we were just going to go away for a little bit and come back r refreshed. But I said, no, I've, I've got to go. And then, the, and then maybe the more skeptical partner of the group, he said, you don't have another job, do you? <laughs> I said, <laughs> said no, I, I don't. I just, my life is on sand right now, and I've I got to go build it on rock. And so I'm going back to Minnesota and see what, see what unfolds. And so I remember coming back to Minnesota. I lived in my brother's house and until uh, um, he got things sorted out. And he lives in Chanhassen right between, at the time lived there. And there are two adoration chapels. No matter if you turn left out of his driveway or right out of his driveway, you go by uh, St. Hubert's or St. John the Baptist in Excelsior. And I just remember being drawn there. And, uh, and that's really where I learned how to encounter the Lord and to pray. And I did that through a, ro a set of rosary meditations um, and pray the rosary. And so the Mary very much helped me um, learn how to encounter her son, taught me how to pray. In fact, back on the retreat, this is another Marian portion, there is a religious sister who is there. And she apparently had some spiritual gifts too, and people were praying with her and being impacted by her prayers and words. So I asked the sister too, I said, would you pray with me? She said, sure. And so we began to pray, and she had a few encouraging things to th say. And then she said, you know, I see, this, I see this dead tree, but Mary's fragrance is coming. Her, her presence is here. She, she's breathing onto the tree, and now there's a little light, a leaf on it. And she said a few other things. And then afterwards, she said, Does, did that, any of that resonate with you? And then I said, um, well, I, I just came over on the bus with my brother, and I told him I felt like a dead tree, not bearing any fruit. And she, and this was hard for her to believe, because I can, I'm kind of joyful by nature, I suppose, and so she didn't really see that I was dead interiorly. And, and she said, well, you got a leaf on there now. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, leaf, let's go, let's go, great. So. So Mary has, has, I really do believe that that's when my reversion took and uh, the examples of my parents and, and my brother's mentoring. He's 10 years older and about 10 years ahead in his own reversion to the faith. Um, and so I entered the seminary. I came back and, and that was uh, spring. And I remember I had my, things are different now, but I had an entrance exam the same day that seminary started <laughs> or an entrance interview. And uh, I had been in the process before that, but, uh, but they let me in. And um, I was able to have that gift of entering seminary and knowing I was in formation. You know, so a lot of men enter seminary to answer their question, but for me, I knew. And uh, seminary formation was preparation and less about discernment. I tried to, you know, I, I didn't want to think too much about the consequences, you know, the the psalm says, the Lord is a lamp for my steps and a light for my path. So not a floodlight, just like a, enough to take the next step. And so that's what I experienced in seminary formation. I had a great experience at the St. Paul Seminary. And um, I've been ordained 11 years now, as Father Jones mentioned, All Saints in Lakeville. Uh, I love that experience of being with families. We had a big school. And, and uh, you never really think you're um, prepared for seminary life or, or um, being formed to go back to the seminary. Uh, but I got a call from the archbishop and, and have, have really embraced it. I mean, as I said, it is a privilege and not just, uh, not just thinking like, well, the real work is done in the parish. We, it, it's priestly work to form future priests. And so all of our priests on staff acknowledge that and we, we try to keep that front and center. Um, and I, so I, but I did tell Bishop Cousins, I said, you know, leaving All Saints is like somebody kind of ripped my heart out. And um, I just lo I loved it. And he said, well, the same thing will be true when you leave SJV 15 years from now. <laughs> I was like, 15 years? I thought this was a six-year assignment or five. <clears throat> well, that was eight years ago, so I, I've unpacked my bags. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm really grateful to be here. So... We're, I'm grateful for your support. I, I, I feel it in the prayers that you have, in the letters that are sent to us in encouragement, and that really strengthens us. As Father Jones mentioned, it is important for me to have an environment where we're, we're living and working together 
oil of gladness has been a theme for us, for our staff, that the oil of gladness. Um, in the Old Testament, it would be on Aaron's beard and then run him down upon his robes of the priests. And the robes of the priests had all of the tribes knitted into the, the garments. And so it basically says, if we're living in friendship and communion with the Lord, with each other, that's going to make the whole community healthy and vibrant. So I'm grateful for your support. And hopefully next year, this time, we'll be, uh, well, we can be here, but an hour earlier, we'll be at our new chapel, uh, Mass, May Crowning Mass and Dedication. We're doing a time lapse of it. And uh, we're three months into the time lapse, one of the St. Thomas cameras. They send us the footage. It's really nice. We'll send that out to you in, the, in an email shortly. We've joked about having a time lapse of the building project and then a time lapse for the rector's gray hair and see if they, see if they match. Uh, but, um, but anyway, uh, God's will in all things. So um, may you know, may you know the peace of Jesus, right? May you know the peace of Jesus. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.